Howdy, Beeflo Bart here, and welcome. All right, today's video gonna make a health bar, and so you know today's drink of choice is, well, Orange Crush. No, I'm not sponsored by them, but I should be. All right, so let's get started. And what we're gonna do to get started off with this is a blank project that I'm gonna be using just for these uh, tutorial videos. So I'm gonna click here so I can get these two to split. I'm going to also get rid of my dude here. Going to get rid of this. I'm just hitting the delete key once I have it selected. Get rid of this. I am going to take you and you so I don't see you and shove you underground. And actually, I am going to delete the reflection capture because I don't need it. Gonna hit save all because why not? I'm going to go ahead and go to Edit, upper left-hand corner. I am going to go to Editor Preferences, and I'm going to change the Asset Editor Open Location to Main Window. So now every time I open up a new window, it's going to be a new tab up on the very top. And I'm going to go down here to Loading and Saving, and I'm going to uncheck Auto Save because you are the master of your own save. You should be hitting that save all regularly and very often I you know same thing but do it same thing in your blueprints compile and edit often all right so let's get into it if we want to be able to walk around now in this we're going to change our world settings from game mode override to third person game mode and as I always do um, I want to clean up my folder structure a little bit, but we're just simply going to go over here to the content folder. I'm going to start off with adding a new folder in, and all I'm doing is right-clicking here and selecting new folder, and I'm just going to call this data. Inside this data folder, and hit enter to open it, I'm going to create a UI or a widget folder. So we're just going to create another new folder, and we're going to call this our widgets. I have completely forgot how to spell. But that's okay. I can rename that at any time. So, user interface, W-I-D-G-E-T. Ah, yeah. It's fun getting old, right? Alright, so inside my widgets folder, the first thing I want to do when I'm creating a health bar is I need to create a health bar. If we hit play and look, first off we have a mouse cursor, and I'll show you in just a second how to get rid of that. We can see our character, we can move around, we can do our thing, but we don't have a health bar. Well, first off, we don't have any health. So, using the third-person template, I'm going to go over here to my third-person BP folder and blueprints and open my third-person character. Okay, as soon as we get in here, we've got a bunch of different things in here. Really not organized well, and we'll, we'll cover that in another video. But essentially, on all these things, you can actually move them around to wherever you want by grabbing the top here. And I also su suggest unchecking this. Because at some point, you're going to want to put these in their own separate area and clean up things. But we're not going to cover that right now. All we're going to do is we're going to come over here, find an empty space to work on. Even though we're not going to do much in the way of editing right now, but we have on the variables tab here, my characters, base turn rate, base lookup rate. I'm actually going to take these and select under a category, my character. What this is going to do is move them to another folder that you can minimize. Now we're going to create a new variable, and this is going to be called health. We kind of need that if we're going to create a health bar. We have to have health, correct? And I'm going to go ahead and replicate that, even though we're not doing any multiplayer replication at the moment. It'll come in handy down the line. We're going to change this to a float, because the way that the game normally handles damage is with a float. We're going to compile and save, and... Typically, the game operates, or Unreal Engine operates off of 0 to 1 for your health. I don't like that method, so I want my health to max out at 100. And we're going to set it to like this. Now, there's another option you can choose to create a minimum health, which is 0, and a maximum health, which is 100. But we're not worried about that. 
we can cover that later on if we need to give an overheal or something like that. But normally, we're not going to be worried about going over our maximum amount of health. We're fully healed, and that's all we need. So that's all we need for right now on the character. So we need to go to our new folder called Data and Widgets. And let's go ahead and right-click, select User Interface, Widget Blueprint. And we're going to preface this with calling it our player underscore HUD for right now. All we're going to have is the health bar, but we can add more things to this later on. So I'm going to hit enter, which will open it up. As you can see, it's going to be a new tab up here. I'm going to hit save. This blue you see right here, this is your screen. Whatever you put inside here is going to be seen in your screen. All we want to start off with is, for now, an image and I tend to like to use the bottom right hand corner of the screen so I'm gonna scroll in and I'm going to place this eh, pretty close to you know evenly spaced from there and let's stretch it out a little bit and if you want you can actually give it a regular size but first I'm gonna change the anchor to bottom right and our size let's make it 200 Actually, yeah, by 40, that's great. And our dimensions, we can just lock it in at negative 220 and negative 60. It spaces it evenly away from the bottom, and that looks good. We're going to go to our color and opacity, and I'm just going to slide this bar down here, go from white to black, and I'm going to go to my alpha, and I'm going to change this to 0.5 now we can see through it it's there we have something we can see through it but it's enough to separate the health bar visibility from the background I'm gonna hit compile and save and the next thing we need is a progress bar so I'm gonna grab this progress bar and then we're gonna have to resize it and let's drop this in here and kinda of scale it to fit that Again, this is all temporary. It doesn't have to be permanent. You can design it however you like, but we're going to start simple and get a health bar working. So, that's good enough, but we need to change our anchor to bottom right. So, no matter what, it's always going to be in the bottom right-hand corner of your screen. Now, with this, let's go ahead and change the names of the things here. I just cl left-clicked twice, or you can hit F2 once you select it. And this is our background. And this is our progress bar. We need to change this to our health bar. So we know what it is. We can see that. Now under percent, you can actually change this manually or you can left click and drag across. And you can see that we can actually move the, the value inside the bar. But it's blue. We don't want our health bar to be blue. So we need to scroll down and we see color, fill, and opacity. I'm going to start off by manually entering in a 1. I'm going to hit tab zero and tab and zero and get a perfect red color. I'm going to left click on here and drag it up here and now I can use this red color anytime I want. And not just here but in it, any other location that it calls up that window for color I can use that color anytime. So the next thing we want to do is we want to give this a value but first off we want to just see that we can get it onto the player so let's go back over here to our player. I know we're kind of working out of order, but it's just to kind of showcase what it's actually doing. We need to add an event begin play. And all I did was right click and start typing in event begin play and we get this node. And what's going to happen is with this node is when we begin to exist in the world, this is going to run all the events after that. What we want is also I'll show you how to compact it up to make it look neater, but let's get started with create widget. We've already created the widget. We're going to keep editing it, but we already created it, so now we need to select player HUD. It's going to ask for a player reference or owning player, and we just need to get player controller. So we can put that here, and then after that we need to drag from the return value and add to viewport and that's going to cover that. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to select all three of these. 
let's first off make sure it works. Let's compile and save. And now if we hit play, we can see that we have that health bar in the bottom right hand corner of the screen, but it doesn't show our accurate value of our health. So all we need to do is tie the two together, but while I'm in here, I'm also going to show you how to clean this up. We're going to select all three of these, and then right click, come down to Collapse to Function, and just start typing Show HUD. Now we have a nice, clean, neat function that we can use other places if we need as well. But I'm going to do another thing here too, and I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that um, mouse cursor. We're going to create another function the same way, and this will take just a second. So set game mode, or set input to game mode only. And we need to get player controller, and we'll neaten this up here in just a second. And we need to set show mouse cursor, connect that, leave that unchecked, select all three of these, right click, collapse to function, and we're going to say hide cursor. Now we can double click these and go into them and actually see what they are. So if you want to, you can take a look at it, add things, change things, what have you. But that's it. Compile, save, and we can close this. And we're good. So all we have to do to finish up our health bar is go back into our HUD, and next to our percent, click binding, create binding, make a little room, change your name, select it, hit F2, and health bar info we're going to cast to third person character which is our player character we need to get player character slide that over there and we need to get health since we are using a scale of 0 to 100, we need to do one more bit of math, and that's it. And it's going to be a float divided by float. Change this number to 100. Connect this to here, and we are done. We are going to accurately show our health bar to exactly what our health currently is. So I can close that, we hit play, no more mouse cursor, and we have an accurate health bar. Alright, that's going to do it for this video. I want to thank everybody for watching, and we will see you next time.